Yeah. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're having a beautiful damn day and I'm super grateful that you are here. Today we're gonna be doing a food prep, little montage type of deal video thing. I was planning on just spending the day alone in the kitchen doing all the things. Then I was like, why don't I bring all of my lovely YouTube peeps along with me and we can create together. Some baba ganoush, some hummus, lots of pickling things, and uh, see where the day takes us. I always start creating and then I always get more inspired as I continue creating in the kitchen. So I don't even know what this video is going to have inside of it as of right now. But without further ado, let's get on to the food. We are starting off with some pickled red onions and guys, these I can literally eat right out of the jar. Like no shame, grab a fork, grab the jar, sit down and munch away. So I started off by just slicing my onion in half and then slicing it into slices. Like half moon rings, you know what I'm saying? I am crying right now. I then stuffed an entire onion into this medium sized jar. It's about the size of a pickle jar, but I think a little bit smaller, maybe 900 milliliters. However, the one onion didn't quite fill it. So I chopped up half of another onion and stuffed it right to the top. And I stuffed it pretty tightly. We're making a bunch of pickled things today. So I am just stuffing the jars full right now. And then I'm going to make the brine all in one. So as you saw, I chopped up a bunch of jalapenos and I tried to knock out as many seeds as I possibly can, but I didn't really want to de-seed them because it's just not spicy enough for me when I do that. We are also making some pickled carrots today. So I just shredded the carrots with your grandma's old fashioned peeler. You know what I'm saying? So I guess these are more ribbons other than like shreds. Just stuff them into a jar. And yes, I stuffed five carrots into this jar. So for the pickled red onions, they deserve some spiciness. So I just added some chili flakes to them and now I'm just mincing some garlic to go in with the jalapenos because I really love that balance between the garlickiness and the spiciness of the jalapenos. I think it just really, really works well together. And now we're moving on to the brine. So I started off by adding two cups of apple cider vinegar and just under two cups of water. It's just a little bit less than a one to one ratio. I then just added one teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of maple syrup per cup of apple cider vinegar. So two in total for both. And because of jalapenos, I feel like we're gonna be really spicy. I added an extra tablespoon of maple syrup just to that one jar. Once the brine had come to a nice simmer on the stove, I then poured it into all of the jars. However, I did not make enough of the brine, unfortunately. So I only filled the red onion jar and almost the whole jalapeno jar. If I knew it wasn't gonna be enough, why did I not make more? So I made another batch of the brine, but I only made half of the amount that I made the first time. And then as I was waiting, I was a little bored and antsy. So I decided, hey, why don't I put some Dijon mustard into these? So that is exactly what I did. I then portioned the vinegar into the rest of the jars, carefully pouring it into the carrot one because it was very, very tightly packed. However, do you like what I'm doing here? Do you like that? I thought that was pretty smart. Work smarter, not harder, right? And I always make a mess. So I was trying to avoid the mess. If you've seen my other videos before, you guys know that um, I'm just, I'm a mess in the kitchen. <laughs> All right, moving on to some damn sauerkraut. Okay, so this is one thing that I'm still experimenting with in the kitchen and having some fun with and playing with. And I've had a couple batches um, not really turn out, which was quite disappointing, but I use a different method than what I'm doing right now. And it's one I would not recommend. It's mixing the water and the salt and then just pouring it over the cabbage. And I really do not like that at all. I like adding the salt to the cabbage and massaging it in there. I can't even say I like it because I haven't tried this yet, but I feel like this is the proper way to make sauerkraut. You know what I mean? The other way just doesn't feel right. I feel like it's cheating. So I got my hands in there to be some cabbage crushers. And uh, then once we 
did that, I set it aside for about half of an hour. In the meantime, I decided to make some baba ganoush. So I had cooked these two eggplants in the oven the day before, and all I did to cook them was rub some olive oil on them, throw them into a pan, and throw them into the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes, 35 minutes, till the outside was pretty charred and almost burnt and then peel the skins away, added them to my blender along with some tahini, lemon, garlic powder, and some smoked paprika, and of course some olive oil as well, and some salt. I almost forgot the salt and that's a very important thing. <laughs> However, I do wanna say, this is the first time I've ever made baba ganoush and I added way too much tahini. I added a quarter cup of tahini and it was a mistake, to be honest. It tasted too much like tahini and not enough like that smoky eggplant flavor that is baba ganoush. So this recipe is to be refined, but it was still, it was still pretty damn delicious, not gonna lie. Just as a little taste test, I put it on a cracker and, uh, you know, showed it off. All right, back to my cabbage friend, the friend that is soon to be fermented. And it makes me super excited because I think making cabbage at home is so freaking cool. Next thing's next. Next thing's next is to learn how to make some sourdough bread. I feel like we're a long way from that, but we're working towards it. So I added a clove of minced garlic and some mustard powder and just kept massaging and working that salt into that cabbage to really break it down and make it extremely liquidy. I then shoved it all into a jar and I actually used the tamp from my blender to shove it in there. I don't have a jar that had a big enough hole for me to shove my fist in there. So I had to use the tamp for my blender and you know what? It really freaking worked and I highly recommend it. So I didn't realize that my phone had stopped recording as I was doing this next step, but what I did is I just put a baggie into the jar and then filled it with water. So the water isn't in the jar, it's in the baggie that's in the jar, which submerges all of the cabbage underneath. So what I'm gonna do from here is actually just set the lid on top and just kind of gently screw it. It can't screw it on all the way just because the baggie is in the way. However, just to make sure no fruit flies or bugs or anything like that can get into my sauerkraut, I'm just gonna leave the lid on top. And then every day or every couple days, I'm just gonna take the lid off move the baggie around, probably replace the water that's in the baggie, and go from there. I'm still experimenting right now with this, so I'm not sure if this is the method that I'm going to be using forever. And I just set it on this plate so that way, once it does start to ferment, it is very possible that it can overflow and spillage will happen. So putting it on a plate to make sure it doesn't get all over my cupboard and whatnot. So after all of the excitement from sauerkraut making, I decided to make some hummus. So all I did was open a can of chickpeas, rinse them, throw them into a towel, give them a little wiggle in the towel, and it helps the skins really loosen up to make peeling the skins off of the chickpeas 10 times easier. However, this task takes forever, so throw on your favorite Netflix show or your favorite YouTuber. You can watch this video while you're peeling your chickpeas. I'm happy to have you, you know? Anyways, we threw salt, oregano, white balsamic vinegar, lemon juice, and some tahini in this. Of course, with some Dijon mustard as well because Dijon mustard is such a nice, well-rounded flavor, along with just a touch of maple syrup to balance it out, some garlic powder, and some onion powder as well. If you weren't lazy, you could roast some garlic. Mmm, is this like the best simple hummus I have made? Mmm, yeah. That white balsamic vinegar, that does it. That brings it to a whole other level. And to think, I was gonna tell you guys not to freaking include it. I'm like, oh, that's optional. No, it's incredible. Oh, so good, so simple. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Topped this delicious damn freaking hummus with a little bit of hot paprika, some pepper, and some fresh parsley. And uh, just for a little show, you know, I had to put it on a cracker and enjoy it. it All right, salad dressing. Salad dressing is the freaking key, but I also use this salad dressing as like a pasta sauce and it's the best. So we got three quarters of a cup of balsamic vinegar. Mm. 
along with a quarter cup plus a couple tablespoons of olive oil, a little bit of garlic powder. Again, if you're not lazy, you can use roasted garlic, some onion powder, some chili flakes for that little bit of spiciness, some mushroom powder, mushroom powder, mustard powder, some oregano, and I unfortunately did not have any basil in the house, but basil is definitely key for this recipe as well. And then put it into a tiny little jar, cute little jar, and I always reuse like my tamarind or tamari, however you say it, and soy sauce bottles because I think they're the perfect size for salad dressings. We're also making an Asian inspired dressing because you guys already know how much I love my Asian flavors. So I added some miso to a jar along with some hot water and gave it a really good shake to make sure it was all combined. You saw that I grated some ginger before and now I'm just adding some tamari or tamarind, however you say it. Let me know down in the comments, one or two. Tamari, one, tamarind, two. I added some sesame oil as well and then I just threw the grated ginger into this small mesh strainer strainer and used my fingers to squeeze out all of the ginger juice and this makes it so there's not like chunks of ginger it's just a nice ginger flavor i then added some onion powder some garlic powder and some sriracha for that little bit of spiciness and of course gave it a really damn good shake and there we go two delicious salad dressings that i cannot live without Thank you so much for watching today, guys. I truly appreciate it. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and you enjoyed everything that I made. If you try any of my recipes, please let me know down in the comments and follow me on Instagram. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and all of the YouTube and uh, social media things, you know? <laughs> I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and I will see you again very soon for lots more content coming your way. Remember to eat your greens, drink your water, have a little dance party every once in a while, and tell yourself you love yourself, because you deserve it. <laughs>